go. As promised, folks, welcome to the Butterfly Estates in beautiful Fort Myers, Florida, 1815 Fowler Street. As promised, we are live. We are outside of the studio in the community downtown Fort Myers. Uh, we got the tribe, the whole soul tribe, not the whole soul tribe, but we got most of the soul tribe with us today. We got Juni, Rashimba, Yona. We got VV, first time ever. Tori, we got some new people who's never been on the podcast before, but um, we're here today, and that's all that matters. It's a beautiful day outside, and we can't complain. So, as promised, this is episode six. I am Jay Green, and we're here to talk about the seven chakras. There's apparently more than seven, but there's seven important ones, and that's what this emblem I wear on my neck represents, the seven chakras. So we're going to dive deep into it. What are the chakras? Why are they important, et cetera, so forth and so on in the spiritual journey? Uh, I'm going to pass the mic. I'm the baby, so there's no sense for me doing all the talking. All I'll say real quick, what I know about the seven chakras is it is basically the concept is our energy, the storage points for energy inside of our body. Uh, Oriental people call them chi. Some people call them prana. It's all the same thing, just different translations, wherever you at on the planet. So we're going to talk about why it's important where our energy store, how to activate that energy if you haven't already. And that's how it ties into Kundalini and how you awaken the Kundalini energy. And we might actually do it today because we're going to do a meditation session. You hear the beautiful music we're around all the butterflies, a surreal atmosphere. So it's going down. I'm going to pass the mic to the Enchanted Raven and let her do her thing now. Hello, 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 guys. Thank you so much for joining us here. And it's, it's a new moon. It's a new moon. <laughs> New moon in Libra season, which is fantastic because it's all about balancing the new energies. You already released all of those negative energies. Let's welcome in the new energies. And that is perfect to align your chakras with. I'm going to go over the seven chakras with you. So the base chakra is down here by your feet right here. The color is red. It's all about financial. It's all about stability. It's all about your, your standing ground. You're going to be stable. So when you want to work with your, foot, your, your root chakra, you want to think about financial stability. Where are you at in your life right now? The next one is your sacral chakra. This is all about passions. The color is orange. Um, yeah, your sexual chakras. Come on. <laughs> uh, leave it to Jay. Yeah, yes, yeah. Exactly. That's right. That's right. But among that, it is about your passions. It's about keeping those passions alive in you. And they, um, the next one would be your solar plexus, and that's the color of yellow. That is happiness. That's your will. So when you are thinking about your life when you are thinking about who is in your your energy circle pay attention to how you stand with your posture if you're hunched over like this you gotta you gotta change your circle you gotta change your circle of friends but if you're standing proud and you're standing in your being then you know that your solar chakra is is strong okay important important your heart chakra right here the thalamus that is your heart chakra that is right there if you notice whenever you go oh that you are you are actually going up against your heart chakra so that is all about your love how you feel how you um, uh, integrate with your fellow humans your your fellow brothers and sisters um, they're very important right now and we've been doing a lot of work on the uh, on the heart chakra as well so um, uh, again with the new moon a new moon relationships Libra relationships um, balancing that balancing the masculine and the feminine um, also you the next chakra is your th throat chakra which is right here and it is the color blue indigo blue so that's your communication how do you communicate with people how do you get your words across again this is a vibration so words are powerful that's why they're called spelling this it's a spell you are literally talking your existence speaking it into existence is a real thing so be careful what you say and that is a very true thing um, so the um, that's the fifth chakra so the, the sixth chakra is your third eye <laughs> feel that power <laughs> um, there's your third eye this is another very important chakra this is where you're gonna open up this is where you're gonna see things beyond what you see in your present reality this is where you're going to see where your passions lie your path lies your um, your intuition is going to come into play here so um, when you open that just know that you're opening all of the, the the energies that are around you so be careful with what you let in and be careful with what you put out 
Um, and then the top crown, or the, the top chakra is the seven chakra, so that is your crown. And it's, it, for me, it kind of goes like this. So it is your crown. It is speaking to the connection. It is your connection with the higher source. Um, it is how you connect with your spiritual beings, your guides, your angels, your source. It's where you get most of your messages, and it's also where it's downloaded into. So when you do that white light that I always talk about, about clearing your aura, you start with the crown chakra, and you go straight down into the earth. So that is my little seven chakra lesson. I will turn the mic over to Miss Rush. Greetings, yes. <laughs> greetings, greetings, yes, absolutely. Enchanted Raven, right on point, right in tune, right on time. Um, I just would like to say, um, based on a previous conversation with someone here, sometimes you may not be able to identify or say a term or say a word or say, you know, call it something. But it's what, what's most important is that you know that you know that you know. Sometimes when you're just in tune, that's all it takes just to be in tune. You don't have to make it a mind thing where you're worried about um, not being able to identify and say, oh, this is the chakra system or I know this system. But it's like just into it intuitively when you when you're on your uh, path, it's going to be things that are just going to naturally feel right for you and just go with the flow don't worry about calling it something don't worry about any of that stuff so as far as what she was saying um, and what we're discussing is the, the chakras um, a lot of healing happens when you focus on the colors of the chakras so as she was talking about the we are the rainbow like w we are the living rainbow like within without as above so below so we are just complete reflections of everything in the universe, everything in nature. So when you're, um, she was speaking about the heart chakra, some work that you all were doing, that color is green. Um, everything in nature is green. So that is healing. That is so if it, and you know, if it's certain things that uh, in your relationships, like you feel like you may need to um, express and maybe you're having challenges talking about something, sometimes just sit still and meditate on the color bl blue and speak affirming words as far as like empowering yourself to be able to express yourself freely and and you know get near some some crystals that are blue get near the waters that are blue just focus on blue you know um so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so even like this is yeah, a yeah, lapis yeah. this is a blue stone this is lapis is very so just know that everything is everything don't get caught up in or any worry that you can't identify something in the beginning just go with what feels natural just be and just in everything that is flowing is going to lead you right to where you're supposed to be so I'm going to add something real quick. I just want to talk about the colors. I know we talked about the colors, and so for everybody know, because they're like, well, why does the colors matter? Like like uh, Rashimba just said, it's kind of like the rainbow. Like it's a frequency. Like each frequency is a different frequency. And then we talked about this already on the podcast briefly about our body's frequency, kind of like a radio station and how we vibrate the human body. I know Yona's going to talk about this because he's, him and Enchanted Raven is into auras and and basically what it's 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 knowing your health. It's knowing where you're vibrating at. Like the human body can raise up to three hundred hertz, but most humans average like seventy two to eighty hertz, depending on what you eat, the music you listen to, so forth, meditation, like we've always continued to say. So real quick I just wanna say the um crown chakra is purple. Um is it the aura? aura? I always call it the third eye, the pineal gland. The first eye. The first eye? Yeah, that's the first eye. So we're going to talk about the third eye, the first eye. The, I mean, the pineal gland is uh, like turquoise blue. The throat chakra is light blue, which is the frequency I'm commonly on from what I've been told by my aura readers. My, my aura is mostly blue. We're going to... I think we should do some aura readings while we're here since we got some aura readings here. <laughs> the heart chakra is green. Uh, the solar plexus is yellow. That's why I got my tiger's eye. And uh, the sacral chakra, which we already talked about, the sacral chakra is orange. We're going to get into that. Um, 
Somebody told me my aura was orange recently, but we'll we'll get into that later. And then we got the root chakra, which is, is red. <laughs> Probably because I need to get laid, but now nah, we're just gonna leave that out there. <laughs> That's my weakest my weakest chakra, man. I need to activate it for real, for real. But it, I don't care, man. I, I'm I'm a free spirit. <laughs> I'm going to take it to upper octave. Okay. I think that people may be recognizing that color in you because, like, sex is real. That's that's creation. <laughs> that's creation. So right now you're manifesting a lot of things. So you're creating a lot of things. So that is very activated in you. It's not always about the, the physical yoni and lingam uh, connection. It's about the creation, the action of creation. So so that's what's going on. You you know, you got all these, the, the, the vision you were just sharing with me about your vision. And mm -hmm. these people are saying how you just elevated and such at such a high rate. So you're creating. I that's, am. that's that. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's and that, up. that is sexual power. <laughs> that's sexual power. That's creative power. Sex is happening everywhere around us. Every moment of every day on the pulse, the pulse, that's sex. Mm -hmm. So that's what that is. That's life. That's creation. That cunt Delini. I say cunt. Cunt Delini. Okay, I want to introduce, we have two. We have um, two new tribes, women here, I guess you could say, soul sisters. I wanna, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. This is their first time. You. You, V. You say what you want to say. Say whatever you want to say. Hi, I'm V. I'm currently pregnant right now, so I'm not standing. <laughs> but um, pretty much I am the baby, I guess, if not Tor is, to the group. I'm pretty much on this learning journey to figure out much more of who I am. And I guess I know, not I guess, I know I'm around the, the freshest group of people ever to turn Whoa. things around. So like I'm excited, that. I'm we excited. Like so just keep sending that positive energy and I know everyone here is on a different level. So if you wanna get on a different level, show up and show out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wonderful ways to bring this new life. Hey, yes. What you got to say? Yeah. What you got to say? Hey. <laughs> and this is Giovanni, my, my three-year-old. Okay, we'll so I don't know who's next. Yeah. Right. Uh, before I turn it over to our, our newest, newest, well, this is their first time together, so I guess it's, it's, it's only right that this happened on this new moon. Full, is this a full moon? New moon. So we're going to talk about that before we get into our uh, meditation about the intentions we need to set tonight. One last thing I want to add. Okay, okay. Uh, before I introduce Tori, um, when I talked about the, uh, the, co the colors of the chakras, they also each have different frequencies. I forgot to mention that. So that's why, that's the importance why an aura reader will tell you what frequency that you're vibrating on the strongest and so forth. And we've, we're going to get into that today. So stay around now. Without further ado, our newest Newest, newest member of the Soul Tribe. Needs no introduction. Hi, my name is Tori. Um, I'm just basically here for the experience. Um, I've had things happening since I was a kid, and I just want to get into more into it and find out what's really going on and just bring people awareness and get people to raise their vibrations. I have goosebumps right now. Here, take this. Okay, <laughs> so I can explain... And it's not only that, but there is a feminine energy around you because that white butterfly keeps flying oh, around you. A feminine, uh huh. Every time I turn around, so exactly. So there's a feminine energy, and I feel like it's a, a grandmother effect, or I feel feel like it's a someone that all. Oh, yep, I knew. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Do you see why I love her? Do you see? <laughs> yes. Butterflies land on me. I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> union. it's union. You're coming into your. Oh, no. Listen, I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Oh, see, she's coming closer. That's that looks like an angel. Look, look, that looks like the angel wings. And I close my eyes. The one that you sent me, the one that we've been listening to with the sun. And I um, closed my eyes, and the first thing I seen was a white dove and an angel appear. And it just went into, like, this black door. But I've just been purging and just, you know, getting rid of a lot of things that mean me no good. And I'm just ready to get into it. 
No, it was like it, you know, absorbed the darkness and out came the light. And I just had chills all over my body. I ended up having to like wake myself up. I was so scared, but went back into it and I was so peaceful and serene and caught that one with the blue. The black one with the blue keeps coming around too. I don't know what that is. This is just an experience. Um, but yeah, yeah, light in the dark. That's what I feel. So I'm just here to, you know, get a new experience, gain a new experience. Mama, what do you want to say? I really like it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's still that here. Hi, Grandma Minnie. Hey, I know that's exactly her because I smell rose perfume right now, and she always used to wear rose that's rose I perfume. Rose I have rose oil. As well. ah. <laughs> there we go. We got a microphone check. Microphone check. It's the Yona on the mic. Hey, thank you, everybody, for tuning into the podcast. Blessings to all. Um, a couple of things to touch on uh, briefly. Um, one, you know, you said something, the, the feeling of a dove, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, my name, Yona, is, means peace and dove. Okay. See, and that's so, what I felt. I felt so controlled. Yeah, so they, they, the, the energy is, is very, very real. Um, also, understanding and, and it's been talked about we're coming into a new moon okay now makes us the most acceptable to accept the energies of this new phase so you have it within yourself to make the decision that you're going to open up your spirit man and woman to the new energies that are upon us okay be more sensitive to what is um, about to happen and, and come in and accept it. Throw through this time, it's not always going to be right away and understanding what's happening. It might throw you off a little bit, maybe will make you a little bit uncomfortable, but stay to the grindstone and keep going. This new moon is a, it's a giant moon, is that correct? It's a giant, uh, it's a giant moon. Moon giant, moon giant. So the power of, of the lunar is, is if you're accepting of it and if you are going to be willing to let that tug in, then it can not only tug but give and do like a give and receive type of thing, an ebb and flow, okay? So accept it. Uh, and talking about the chakras and aligning your chakras, what better way to align your chakras than the start of a new moon? I'm telling you right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Preach on, brother. Preach on. So, and look, at, medical science says you cannot fake goosebumps. You cannot fake goosebumps. So if I'm covered from head to toe in goosebumps, then it's, 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 can I get a fax, somebody? Okay. Yo, so. Uh, this is Yona. Uh, you guys know Yona. Um, I'm real. I'm honest. I'm gonna keep it true, and I am only here for you. If I'm not here for you, then I'm gonna be here for the person that you might know that might be into what we're talking about. But we're on a mission, and we're gonna accomplish this mission because we're trying to not. We're, we're not going to do this to you. We're not, we ain't doing no finger wagging over here unless we do like this. No, no, no. Don't bring that, don't bring that shit to us. Get my neck going. No, no, no. It ain't happening. But we are only wanting to bring as much love, light, energy, positive affirmations. And, and we, are, we are claiming and we are showing gratitude for everything that we don't have as if we already do have it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna give the mic back to uh, Jay Green. And, or no, 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 my bad, my bad. I'm out. Oh, we got we got Junie on the mic. Junie, this is this is uh, our, our one of our newest uh, members to the podcast. This is the second podcast with us. What's up, Junie? How's it going, Junie? What's up? How's it going? <laughs> what's up? So what's the question? What's up? It's Junie. You already know. What's the what's the question? What are we? We're talking about the seven chakras. Seven chakras. Okay. Just, just give a nugget or something. Uh, okay. 
I don't know. I don't know like how to just pick something to just so say, right? You have something? So, um, your Kundalini event. Yeah. The, the experience yes. that you had. Yes. So with your chakras, where did you feel it first? Did you feel oh, it that's a good question. So Dang. Yeah. Okay, you know where I felt it first, yo? Right here, yo. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right. It was, it's like really heavy pressure. It's like there's another, there, there's like two of me right here, the spirit and then the body, right? And so, uh, yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, the, the goal of this podcast is to awaken whoever is watching to the reality of their spirit, man, like to the fact that you are another breed of being. You're not just this flesh. Right. And if you do think you're just this flesh, you're highly limited in fact you're in the system and you're blind you don't even know it that's the crazy part about it because the moment you get aware of the spirit man that's it everything just activates hi (laughs) you just you just know no you no. like i remember when this thing was i remember when this was for real bro 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 i was on my way to the to the beach with my pastor and he just started talking to me and he's very powerful right as he was talking to me man i started just feeling it and i was like Cause he would keep talking about like the spirit man, and then that day I was just like, "Whoa, yeah, the nice. guy is real! Like this is for real! Like you can actually..." And the more that that, the more that that part of you, which is the divine part of you, is empowered, life just becomes like another level. Like you just walk into a room, you know what's going on. Like you don't. Need, no one has to say anything. You already know. Okay, there's bad energy. These people are not okay. Dip or okay. No, this is a welcoming environment. You feel you know, like you just know you can't fake it. It's real. So, uh, Junie in a place to be. You already know what's up. Thank you, everybody. See y'all. So, uh, so I guess we're gonna get into the med- the group meditation. It's the first time. I hope I didn't do nothing. Okay, good. So this, I think this is the first time we've collectively done a group meditation. I know me, Tori, and Enchanted Raven did one via like online that's a beautiful black and yellow oh oh that <laughs> that black and yellow one won't you v i don't know what it is <laughs> don't be afraid if a butterfly fly on you we are in the butterfly states in fort myers 1855 so uh i guess we're gonna ask the enchanted raven and Rashimba to kind of um be the narrators of our group meditation because Oh, also, I want y'all to talk about, I know you got like an affirmation you want to read uh, for the new moon tonight, because uh, I know you sent it to me when we get into it. Yeah, I think I have it. Okay. Uh, I think so. So I'm looking for that. I think Yona wanted to add one final thing, and then you and Rashima, we're going to sit down. However you want to meditate, V has to sit down, maybe lay down. I'm going to get down in the end. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, that came out the wrong way. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that like that. She know what I meant. You found? Okay, so she's going to get the affirmation for the, uh, to set your intentions. For you that's watching this, to set your intentions. And she'll explain what setting your intentions is for a new moon versus a uh, full moon. It's different, which we kind of talked about on the uh, last podcast. Right. You want to set in the newness now not and, and get rid of the old. Right. right. You want to add to that? Um, and, and starting this meditation process, um, just it's, 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 it's like one, two, three, ABC of meditation. Let's start with the crown, okay? Let's start with the top, and then we're just going to slowly, you imagine yourself relaxing your body in segments. It's too much for the mind to say you're going to relax the whole body from head to toe like that. So break it down in segments. We're going to pass it off to, to Jennifer and Shamba and, and let them guide it. But this is the, the easiest way. This is how I learned how to meditate is to break your body into segments and imagine and filter your, your segments down. And that relaxation trickles down into the next part you're trying to relax. Okay. Relax. We're going to start the process with three deep, heavy breaths in. And not only into your lungs, take that breath in to your lungs, into the bottom of your lungs, into your diaphragm, into your stomach. Okay? And then push it out. In through your nose, out through your mouth. 
And relax it. Move that from the hair to the follicle to the top, the crown of your head. Relax it. Breathe. Breathing is the most important step of meditation. Relax your crown. Relax your foreheads. You are feeling, you are accepting, you are letting this energy, it's going to consume you. Now your eyebrows are relaxed. Your eyelids are feeling a bit heavy. It's moving down through your face, through your ears, through the back of your head and your neck. Your lips are re re released. Your throat is released. Swallow swallowing all of that relaxation that you've just taken into your head and you're swallowing it into your body. Let's, let's swallow that energy. Bring it into the throat, the shoulders. Okay, feel that re relaxation. Your shoulders, your chest, your heart, your mid to lower back. And we're focusing that relaxation all the way down. Now we're in the bosom. We're in the chest area. Gratitude. We're in the sternum. We are in the navel cavity. We are relaxing all of that. Source love, source Relax light. it. And it's okay. If anybody has to pass gas right now, I'm not mad at you, but relax Freedom everything. Okay? Take it easy. Joy, laughter, love. Move this energy down into your center. Move it down into that, that orange area that we talked about earlier. Relax. Just taking a moment and Accept it. Accept the changes. Feeling inside of you. Everything around now, you. Now, with everyone life. sitting on the butts, the last thing, feel that relaxation moving into your hind parts. Thank you. And relax it. Life. Relax it. And we breathe. Remember to breathe. Breathe. Being here for me. Loving me. Holding me. And all of that relaxation, let it flow. Providing for me. Out into your legs. Into your calves. Now into your ankles. Into your heels. Now into your feet, into your toes, now into your fingernails, your toenails, and all of the bad energy, everything that we felt prior to this time together is now away from us, from our toenails and our fingernails. And now breathe. If you're not already in that meditative state, if you can follow the sound of my voice, then take a deep breath in and hold it for two seconds and release that breath. Just opening up the space for anything you want to say. In this place we verse, that we traverse, the universe. if every step was followed properly, then Source you should be able to now God. start to see Open at up. least the fourth dimension. It's there for your taking. Grab it. Reach for it. 
Elevate your mind to that place. I should sound almost like static because now you're going away from my voice and you're getting pulled in closer to the fourth and the fifth dimensions. Embrace it. It's a welcoming feeling. Let's own it. And we remember to breathe. Collectively out. Today we let go any of the trials and the tribulations that we are dealing with in our life. We let go of it in the middle, right now, of this circle that you have all sit upon. We let go of it. Anything that's holding us back, limitations, trials, difficulties, relationships, men, women, kids, anything. We let all of this negative energy go right now. We let it all go right now. And we breathe in one more time collectively. Healers. Ray showers. All of us, let's come together. I don't know about all of you, but I feel some kind of a tingly way. Raise up, open our hearts, and it feels good. Gratitude. We're gonna do a series of three deep breaths. The deep ones that we started with, in through your nose, past your lungs all the way into your belly until it hurts. We're gonna do three in, three out. Brightly. Care for one another, support and then one another. we're going to ask the universe and to, and to summon a chakra alignment for everyone here in this place. So that our, our energies, our auras, our intentions, everything is going to be on the same page. So when we leave this place, we can go out and we can be the best servants to help as many people as we can to bring them to where we were at now. We're gonna go breathe deep breaths in, out, in, out. Take your time. Everybody breathes differently. In and out. In and out. In and out. And let it be light. Let it be light in you, around you. Now with all of that energy that we just relaxed from our head to our feet, into our fingernails while we were relaxing ourselves we were expounding so much negative energy so now as we reawaken those areas we reawaken those areas you are beautiful you are powerful we're going to have that filled with positivity and love and everything that we want to have and accomplish and receive. We start at the feet. Start at the feet. If you can hear the sound of my voice, let's wiggle your toes. Let's awaken ourselves again. Let's bring them back. Slowly, welcome this new energy of the new moon, the giant moon, coming in, up through our legs, our calf muscles, our thigh muscles, all this new, more enlightened, more connected energy that we're all accepting.
Hi, I'm Rob. I'm from the Florida Native Butterfly Society in downtown Fort Myers. Um, this is our glass butterfly house that we have here where we raise, protect, and preserve butterflies, all Florida butterflies. So if you look over here, you'll see that um, these are where our host plants are. And every single butterfly has a specific host plant. In order for its young to survive, they must lay their eggs on a specific plant. So what we do is we share with people what plants to plant in their yard in order to attract certain species of butterflies. So inside here, you'll see that we have the cassia plant. This is um, the plant that supports a lot of the yellow butterflies that you see in Southwest Florida. Their caterpillars actually will turn yellow. You can see them close to the flowers there. This is a passion vine. Passion vine supports three butterflies in the state of Florida. This is our uh, state butterfly, which is the zebra longwing, which is this white caterpillar that you see on, these, on this passion vine. But it also will support Gulf fritillaries and the Julia butterflies. And then this is, um, this is wild lime. And wild lime supports the largest butterfly in all of the um, United States. It's the great, um, it's the large swallowtail, the giant swallowtail. And uh, we raise all of our butterflies here by hand. So we actually go and collect the eggs off of the host plants, bring them inside our facility here. And once they hatch from their eggs, we will hand feed each specific caterpillar until they go to chrysalis. And this is where you'll see all the chrysalis for the butterflies that we've currently raised. Up here, you'll see our yellow butterflies. These are sulfur butterflies and it their chrysalis actually looks like a leaf. But as they get closer to hatching, they'll turn yellow. So they go from green to yellow. And that yellow is actually the wing coming through. And that means that that chrysalis is about to hatch. And now you look down here, you'll see these are monarch chrysalises. So monarch chrysalises are very beautiful. If you look closely at them, you'll see that they have a gold band around them. And um, they are very important because uh, monarchs are having a hard time and they, they actually migrate every year from um, North America all the way into Canada. And uh, so they travel, uh, I mean, from Canada all the way into Mexico. And uh, so they travel quite a distance. So there's several generations by the time they get there. But due to pesticides and loss of habitat, we actually are seeing a, a large population diminish. So it's very important to not use pesticides anywhere on your, on, on your lawn. It's not necessary in Florida, actually. Here's another butterfly that I'd like to point out to you that just hatched. This is a white peacock butterfly. She's actually drying her wings right now. She just hatched out of the chrysalis. This is a butterfly that you often will see um, in the ditchways of um, Southwest Florida. They're looking for their host plant, but they're very beautiful, gold, and they're actually a great example of how if we let the butterflies do their job, they'll do a great job of weed control. So every day here at the conservatory in downtown Fort Myers, you'll see that we will do butterfly releases every morning. And those butterfly releases are done from these butterflies that have hatched every day. We bring them out into our facility in order to find a mate and quickly lay eggs. Life expectancy for butterflies is very short, an average of only two weeks. So they live a very short period of time. So their real job is to find a mate and lay eggs as quickly as possible. Let's take you inside. So now we're inside the conservatory and as you can see, we play um, music that is uh, kind of calming and relaxing. We built the entire facility to be accessible by, for handicapped people. My mother has multiple sclerosis. We wanted to make sure that she was able to get everywhere throughout the entire butterfly states through ramps or the ease of um, pathways. So as you come here and um, you, you know somebody who is maybe handicapped or just needs some place to relax, this is the place to do it inside the conservatory. So I was telling you a little bit earlier that we allow our butterflies to lay eggs in here. So as our butterflies will journey around, you'll see that some of them are laying eggs. Back here in the back, we have birth wart. And that is a uh, host plant for some of the swallowtails. You'll see a female swallowtail up there, and she's laying eggs on the vine right now as we speak. And that will happen throughout the entire day. The males will travel very close to where the females are. They will often perch inside the conservatory waiting for a female to fly by, and then they will chase her. But like in most you know, um, animals, uh, 
females rule, so the guys will chase the females. Females will often land if they're interested in the guy. They'll lay their, their, their wings wide open for him to come investigate her. But if she's not interested in him, she goes like this and tells the guy to take a hike. So, <laughs> so that's just uh, something you should know about butterflies and they're very beautiful. You just need to take your time when you're around them and watch what they're doing. They're very interesting. Their behavior is very different from species to species. And we're so lucky in Southwest Florida. If you plant a host plant in your yard, I guarantee you, you're going to get a butterfly that's going to come to your yard for sure. Take a look around. Thank you.